Hey everybody, this is Marcilio, and thanks for your interest in my take on markets. I combine technicals and timing for uh, an eclectic, but um, often amazing view of price action. I really appreciate uh, your likes and subscribes on YouTube and Twitter. Uh, so please do that if you find this valuable. So first, um, uh, I'm going to do a review, then look at some charts, talk about what is next, uh, talk about tech setup, which has um, got a little slightly different look and a little bit of news on that. And then um, a little bit more on the data edges uh, a little bit later. So that's for people who are interested in that kind of thing. So first, the review. I have to say between, um, you know, I'm putting out content in a few different places, got YouTube, Got my uh, quick takes that are near the open, uh, New York Stock Exchange open during the week, and then occasional uh, updates between these three sources really nailed most of last week. Uh, crypto low accepted, but um, really one of my better, I have to admit, is pretty good uh, predictions uh, this, this year, especially since starting to um, call the markets in more detail. But last week was a standout. Uh, the idea from the YouTube was uh, Tuesday to Thursday low, that stronger assets could bottom on Tuesday and the weaker assets bottom on Thursday. And on Tuesday on a tweet called an audible, said low in, um, which was correct for indexes. Crypto low came in some hours later. And actually, if I had looked at the Bitcoin uh, four hour chart at that point, uh, it was pretty clear it was not quite the same uh, technical strength as indexes. Uh, maybe we'll take a look at that later. Then um, for the YouTube, a dovish Fed idea was correct. It wasn't just dovish Fed. It was the data edge kicked in on Wednesday that I thought that would boost the market, which it did. But also a speculative take on Jay Powell would be bullish. And maybe that was a coin toss. Maybe I just got lucky, but it did work. And even last week's YouTube said uh, it could be a massive rally in the direction of the trend on Wednesday. And that was just spot on. Um, then on Thursday, uh, per quick take, I thought there would be tech selling a uh, lower day of close, and that was spot on. And then started thinking about toppy indexes, uh, especially in the Dow. Tweeted out a couple of things on that, and so far that is correct. So you really won my better weeks. And um, so here we go. I'm going to try and do it again, although I can't. You know, that's, that's going to be tough to top. Uh, so first, I want to point out, one of the ideas from last week was that um, small caps could outperform. I, I actually did say small cap innovators, but small caps from the tweet that the low is in are in the candles and every other index, uh, the main index, uh, uh, here using the ETF, so SPY, QQQ, DIA, are in the color. So actually small caps did outperform on the rally uh, from that day, but then you know gave gave a lot back when they got whacked on Friday, um, or yeah uh, on Friday. But this was the low in call and small caps beating the others. So that the calls on uh, IWM really uh, were a good gain, and then cryptos did rocket it's just in terms of percentage, but I missed the low, so I'm not counting on that. So in terms of my best ideas. You know, I'm on a roll here, um, but I didn't I totally nail the crypto low. So I can't call this a fully four for four, but pretty good to be looking at small caps on the rally um, midweek uh, and, and getting it on Tuesday. That worked out pretty well. And in general, bullish for the Fed uh, also worked out pretty well. So that's the review. Now let's look at some charts. So. Here's S and P, and actually the pivots, the levels are the same that I've been using, but the look is a little bit different. I'll say that more about that later. Um, but S and P is up against uh, this is a half year and quarterly, so half year resistance and quarterly resistance combo. Now notice this yearly level. There was a battle around that. Um, cleared once, fell below, cleared twice, tested, held, and then tested, and then held, and then th this was the Fed ramp. So now we're up to the next level, which is a uh, half 
quarterly level. And what's of special interest to me uh, now is the Dow, because the Dow reached yearly R1. And, and you know, even though the Dow doesn't get a lot of, it's not nearly the same volume in terms of futures, contracts traded, and it's kind of with the market weighting is a little weird, but historically speaking, the Dow pivots uh, are exceptionally important. And um, I can talk point to many historical key turns on the Dow pivots, especially the yearly levels. And when the Dow reclaimed its yearly pivot last October, it did have a two day break uh, and then a recovery day that was indecisive. And then the, the last day of the month uh, recovered in October. That was it. The test of the Dow pivot um, it's really a sideways year last year for until the fourth quarter. And it did, you know, break and come back a couple of times, but that was it. Um, so I'm just pointing the importance of the Dow yearly pivot here. And but now this is we're up against yearly R1. So potentials there for significant turn. We don't really have all the ingredients, but yeah, technically, you know, the RSI. Dow yearly level rejection so far and where we are with sentiment certainly could be setting up for um, pullback, but I don't think it's going to be severe and I don't think this is the end of the bull run for 2024. But still, um, alert for some trading top gear and thinking about best ways to play it. So that's the Dow. Here's also the uh, NQ level that I was referencing during the week. Uh, came in on Thursday. We were right on it. And that um, worked out pretty well in terms of a level to watch for intraday uh, selling that this is showing the futures, but if we go to index, it looks a little bit different on Thursday or QQQ, but it was, it, it's um, just where the futures open. Let's see if we can get to how uh, the Qs looked on Thursday. Yeah, I mean, that was the selling near open low, low on close. And then, um, Okay, so let's see, I want to take a look at the Bitcoin chart. Um, so this is Bitcoin daily, and um, it has just held its yearly R2 as support. I know there's a lot of lines on Bitcoin because it moves so much. You get a lot of levels more clearly or, or, or move, move through them more quickly. But if we want to simplify things, we can just take off uh, and just leave the yearly levels only. So it's, um, oh, excuse me, this is yearly R2 uh, holding a support. And then I wanna remind everybody that Ethereum, um, the yearly R3 only exceeded by one trading day. And then this, that was the warning uh, candle to me. And so it went all the way up you know, yearly R3 resistance back down 50 may held. So, you know, cryptos don't look bad here, but I don't I don't think we're returning to a rocket up trend. I think we're going to be in for a sideways period. I'll say more about that in a little bit. Uh, but that's the charts, um, you know, some main charts of interest. Uh, sentiment remains fairly toppy. We, we got, um, this is a weekly put call chart with a couple of different moving averages and a different bowling bed setting on it. But anyway, the point is market has only been below or the put call has only been below this level a handful of times in recent years. So that means, you know, there's just too many people on one side of the boat. And that's usually when we see some kind of uh, shakeout. I am completely bracketing the 2020 2021 period as QE infinity work from home day trade options as a historical aberration. I am not expecting that we'll see down in this area again, even if the Fed cuts rates just different. And then um, another technical note, uh, this isn't a lock, but we do have some starting to see some divergence in new highs. Uh, and that, that may show up in the Russell. So big surge last year. And then this was early March. And now at a lower high, even though index is higher, we got fewer stocks making new highs. So it's one of those putting all the pieces together here for a possible uh, pullback. So, okay, what is next? Uh, 
timing wise, I want to pay very particular attention to what is breaking out um, maybe, maybe Monday, but especially Tuesday all the way into early April, because whatever move that starts there could really accelerate. And I know I mentioned something similar last time, and, and the only asset that I saw that uh, worked in that time range was oil or crude oil. But here, this should be a, a kind of more forceful, more notable move. Dollar is, something's up, something's up. Dollar is on the move, and technically speaking, I have to say this looks quite good. Just held its yearly pivot after, look at all these tests, the yearly pivot, and then launch above, another pivot status change, and all these moving average changes. It was kind of uh, clustered because of the tight range, but in one day, it was already above 10, but it recovered 20, recovered 50, recovered 200, recovered, um, should be 100, and yeah, 100 also, a wall in one day, and then the next day it's moving above all pivots as well because the monthly had, had yet to take it out. So dollar moving on uh, pretty strong technical developments the last two days. So it's definitely something's going on that doesn't really point to a dovish Fed. Um, so I, I don't even know the headlines around that, but that's what I'm watching. If this continues to move up, it's going to pressure all risk assets, including cryptos, and there'll be probably some shorts. Uh, you know, China's looking weak and, and maybe something's going on there. So, but again, bottom line, what is breaking out? Maybe Monday, but especially Tuesday could go all the way into early April or April 4th. And so watching that carefully. Uh, this week, there is um, a short-term positive, pretty strong in play. And what looks the best to me um, now is just lar large cap tech could easily float higher into quarter end. Now, how much? I don't know. But Microsoft has been up against levels a couple of days, but not notable selling. Like that could ease. If, if, if we turns out a little bit more bullish, um, yeah, I'll say more about the day to day coming up. But the bullish scenario plays out for the week. Microsoft looks good just because maybe they'll take out these levels. Uh, Amazon, uh, similar, just floating higher, ready to move higher if it can. Um, Google looking good. So these are just the large cap tech AI plays. Um, Meta maybe, maybe Meta a little bit further from its level. Um, and then I, I just happened to notice, I do look at what stocks were near their highs. It's definitely um, this year, I mean, every year, but this year in particular, what stocks are making highs, near new highs have been the places to be. And you've got a fixation on Tesla, Apple has just been a massive waste of time. And of course, NVIDIA and the semiconductor is doing well. Although I, um, let's take a look at NVIDIA. Right now, NVIDIA, well, I mean, NVIDIA looks good. It's already powering up again, just unstoppable. And that probably will uh, continue. And then if we get up to 985, that'll be a place to watch. I don't think, even if we get a pullback, um, Early quarter two, I think every I think any any drop in semiconductors or Nvidia is going to be money is going to be stepping into buy. So, um, on cryptos, I have to say I don't have a high confidence uh, for this week. It's possible the crypto low came and went. Um, it, it's it doesn't have the strongest data edges for the coming week. Uh, and, and certainly the move in the dollar is going to hinder, but this does, you know, it doesn't look like a bad, black hole. I think my best guess for cryptos is we're just in, in entering into a sideways choppy period that, uh, instead of maybe the big drop is done, but I don't think it's returning to power up move. I think that's my best take on cryptos at the moment. And then, um, if we get into a bearish scenario, uh, meaning uh, VIX moves a little bit more, um, dollar powers up, indexes don't really go higher, especially, you know, Dow remains resistance. The, the yearly R1 on the Dow, this continues lower. Um, and the other thing I want to point out is on um, the Russell, this is uh, the futures, but same difference. And we just had a reversal bar from top of the Bollinger Band after a lower high. 
And so maybe, you know, the small caps could be a place to play on a pullback for hedging or just as a trade. And the other thing is um, China's just basically weak. Uh, this is its weekly chart. You know, this looks, it, this is bear market. This is just trend trading. Um, this weekly chart configuration is bearish. And if the dollar goes up, that's going to be pressured. Um, now, uh, let's see, I'm going to switch to a daily chart on FXI. Just throwing out some setup ideas or things I'm watching. Take advantage. Yeah, I mean, daily, it's not a full on trend down. It's kind of still above a rising 50 MA and MACD hasn't turned on yet, but still got got some love. This is a, a 100 MA falling. Not so pretty, mostly still bearish yearly pivot, half year pivot, quarterly all below. Um, so and it may be something going on with China because of this um, big currency devaluation. In any case, the other thing that I'm watching very carefully is VIX. This is VXX, not on a four hour basis, not really showing any kind of sign of strength yet and not near a major level. So all we've got is just a, a we do have a reversal bar on VIX from the lower band, not but no change of pivot status or MA status. So is that it? You know, um, maybe I, I would like to see VIX start to outperform again after the big slam last week. Here's the last time VIX uh, tagged the lower band. It's not every day that we see a lower band tag on the VIX and I'll get some data edges on that. Um, okay, so now a few words about my the technical setup that you're seeing. Um, so I wanted to get the pivots in a way that were shareable. And as it turns out, um, but the conversion is a little bit more of a hassle, but I'm, I tweaked their code so that I could include the half year pivots, which it did not. So I'm going to do a special video uh, probably tomorrow on how to set up this same tech view should you want to in trading view. And you're going to have a couple of options depending on what trading view subscription you have, because if you have a premium, then you can put it all on there. Um, basically, what I've got is um, some, let's, let's just take a look at, a uh, index, uh, I'll just go back to S and P here. Um, so my tech setup is moving averages and pivots, uh, bowling rands, volume, and then down below statistics, RSI, MACD. And of course I could say a lot about how I'm using all this stuff, but the pivots I changed from custom scripts that had the kind of shape to trading view, uh, the trading view version. So you can all, um, so I can publish and you can use it. Again, special video coming Monday on this. And um, the moving averages are a tool that exists that was developed by somebody else that I really like because it changes color based on slope, but it's up to you to adjust these settings. Again, I'll, sh I'll go in to show you how exactly how to do that in a separate video. And then the pivots, what I've got here are yearly, half yearly, quarterly, and monthly pivots. And then on the shorter time term time frames, like here is a Bitcoin four hour chart. We're adding in weekly levels, uh, weekly pivot and resistance levels, and just the daily pivot. Otherwise, it gets too cluttered. Um, I'll give you an example on the NQ how some of these can be pretty exact. Um, so look at this. This is quite interesting. This is, um, I mean, this was the monthly pivot on NQ, which was the low on Tuesday, straight shot up. And this is a yearly level on the futures combined with weekly R2. And that nailed it. So the reversal bar there. So look at this, just looking for reversals on pivots with other technical indicators, often working out well. And uh, that was the reversal on NQ. Um, and then uh, on the Russell, similar down near the bottom of the bowling around. So we had a reversal pivot held, uh, had broken pre-market, but held, recovered. And then nothing as much, uh, nothing clearly on the top, but did work, this idea did work out pretty well on the low. Um, so, and then on the very short term time frame, we're adding in daily levels. So same idea, pivot in orange, 
resistance in red. Uh, so this is a 30 minute Bitcoin chart. And so all the same, so moving average is always the same. 10, uh, 10, 20, 50, 100, 200, change color base. So I've got it set that when sloping down, it's red. And then otherwise it's in color. Uh, Bollinger Band standard settings, because I like to see how it reacts to the Bollinger Bands. Um, oh yeah, I did promise. Um, why was I early on the low call for Bitcoin? Because it was still, the clo four hour closes outside the band, usually some kind of warning. And this, this, these two bars, great combo here. So that was just a little bit later, selling exhausted, huge hole, the four hour 200 MA. That, that was a, a pretty good, pretty good buy uh, for the crypto scene. Um, now, okay. And then uh, below, same settings, all time frames, stochastics. Got a slightly tweaked. Um, so this is, I'm starting to use these a little bit more, you know, the, but I'll explain more about that in the video that I'll do. This is standard RSI. It's available on TradingView. I really like the um, gradient here when it gets overbought, oversold. And when you get down in the area and it's holding this, it's a sign of strength often in the larger uptrend uh, where buyers are stepping in. And then I have a tweaked MACD. So, um, Go back to dollar chart, just kind of show how this works on a daily basis. Um, s and we haven't had a good trend buy in months, um, but since the dollar just went on an interesting technical buy. Um, so these are different MACD settings that everybody uses, and I use both the histogram and the signal line, but the Bollinger Band reversal would have been in here. So first nibbles here, I wasn't really thinking by the dollar. I'm just pointing out, here's where the trend reversed. Tag an hour outside the band, but yearly pivot holds. Outside the band, but yearly pivot holds. Yearly pivot holds back inside the band. Yearly pivot holds inside the band. And then we have a low test. And that was really the key because now we have a, a fully inside the band, low test, and then the next day, boom, yeah, rally. Now start to have some technical improvements that were above another pivot, above a moving average, get into this congestion zone. And now, now uh, Friday was the first day above all pivots in, in some weeks. And MACD had just crossed, the signal line just crossed into positive territory. So that's a kind of trend. So reversal buying opportunity is right in here. Now we're on a trend buying opportunity uh, as of uh, really early Friday, we cleared the monthly pivot and MACD signal up. And then the next setup that I use is an ad, but that, that we haven't gotten there yet. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna talk about data edges. I'll su we'll sum up next best moves for the week and then get into data edges. I think this week holds up for indexes looking for best opportunity on the long side is going to be large cap tech. And I mentioned um, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, uh, like that. And if there's going to be selling pressure, I don't think those are going to be hit too hard. I think they're the most attractive assets. And I guess we'll also see how NVIDIA does also looking strong as usual on the bear side. Uh, you know, Russell, technically weakest, China, technically weakest in terms of, I don't track everything out there, but it already looks suspect and something's going on with the currency and also paying, paying particular attention to VIX, not just this coming week, but especially um, into the next few weeks as a trading opportunity. So my best guess is um, I, what I'd like to see is uh, down Monday, uh, I think this will apply for cryptos, but not as part of it, uh, indexes down Monday, mo another Monday, Tuesday, low recovery, and then some kind of quiet profit taking into month end, also quarter end, also holiday weekend. And um, just going to pay special attention if that move in the dollar continues through the week, that'll kind of lock in a more bearish scenario. I do think in general, March 26th or to April 11th or so is a higher risk 
period for the markets. So that's that's my best idea in terms of um, next best moves. And now I'm going to go into the data edges a little bit. This is going to I'm giving you a behind the scenes look with a little bit more detail. So here we go. Um, what I've tried to do is quantify it. Now I'll first I'll show you some numbers and dates, and then I'll get into the Tableau charts. So here is some stats. And this is a first first draft of the kind of thing that I want to communicate. This is um, the actual numbers and time periods of when these data edges are in play. And one of the reasons I was bullish for last week was that there was a confluence of short term edges. So we've got mostly focused on um, S and P data ed edges right now, and Bitcoin is in process, and so we'll get to that. And then the data edges can vary when I talk about a, sh a very short-term edge, four hours, two and a half days. Short-term could be anywhere from two days up to 12 days, but usually around a week. Medium-term to me is two to four weeks and long-term is long anything longer than a month, but it's because of the incidents. You know, when we get out to historical data that's you know, six months or something, there's just not a lot of incidents. We can observe it, but it's hard harder to quantify. In any case, the, um, the edges that were in play Recently, uh, here's the start. So we had, you know, March 11th, March 16th, March 19th, and then two of them ended on the 21st. And as soon as they ended, boom, you know, character change. Now, is this enough? Uh, that remains to be seen. There's another bullish edge that's still in play to the 26th. And, but then once that ends, um, you know, uh, th those are kind of three that combined for last week that helped fuel the rally. And I'll show the Tableau charts in this, but when I say bullish edge, what does it mean? It means when the timing is meeting this condition, the average S&P is uh, percent return is this. And then when, when at all other times it's, it's this. So for example, last week, the edge that kicked in on Wednesday, um, you know, so average return, uh, 0.24% on S&P when it is in that condition. And then all other times it's 0.1. So actually that's more than double, two, almost two and a half times the gains. And when am I measuring that? Here from October, the current phase of the bull market. And I'm only measuring bull markets only. So it's not that it's a negative when it's not in play. It's that a positive is over. Um, but uh, but both of the all of these were pretty significant edges in play all, all at the same time because they were all, you know, almost so 1.8 times the gains, 2.6 times the gains, 2.4 times the gains, all kind of overlapping. Now, there's a, a very short term edge, bearish edge in play on Monday for session, and it's actually negative, which is pretty rare considering we're in a bull market and um, measuring from October 2022. So that's kind of amazing that there's a certain time period that I can pick out that's negative. And this is um, when I measure on an ES, that's a 15 minute bar average percent return, followed by a, a more positive edge, uh, quite strong historically that's in play the 27th to 29th, I, I don't expect to be as strong this time because I think we're going to be seeing some profit taking ahead of the long weekend. But still, this is just massive. Um, you know, in that period, uh, compared to uh, seven times, <laughs> this is all the time. So I hope I'm communicating this clearly enough that uh, this particular edge divides time into 12 two and a half day components. I'll get to the tableau chart in just a minute. And within one particular component, it's been seven times the gains compared to everything else. And that has been in play uh, from October 2022 to current. Now, does it guarantee up every time? No, it does not. There's still some variability, but uh, along signals have paid out quite well. Uh, other edges that are in play that are medium term, there is an edge that should help support the market. Um, that's already been in play through April 4th, but followed by uh, these two, which are particular note uh, already in play, but notice when, you know, especially when the positives run out, um, this is interesting. 
measuring from these longer term measuring from 2000, or I could go back 1980 also, but here's how I measured it from January 20, 2000 and current still in bull markets only. Um, there's a bearish edge in play uh, that's, that's, that's uh, already in play from March 20th. So that, you know, part of the selling that's in play for the next couple of weeks. And that has been uh, exceptionally strong for VIX. And so here are the, so that's the kind of the number side, but the reason I like Tableau is it just made the data come alive. So let's see, I'm gonna start out and do cover um, several of these data edges that I just talked about. I will go back and do um, uh, from uh, not quite in the same order, but here is the VIX edge. So this is in play. So when we're in the period that the, the that we're in now, it's about four weeks. Even in a bull market for S and P from two thousand, this is um, VIX in this period. Here's VIX all their time. So this is just a massive. Massive, I and mean, to me, the charts just make it jump off the page. How this is not just one outlier, I have checked into that. That VIX outperform is a good bet to be looking for, and that's why I'm highlighting it as a potential setup. Um, and then here is uh, uh, SP similar. Now, this is a bull market now, it's not negative, but basically, um, there have been enough sudden drops, even in bull market. That's why the VIX, VIX got up, S&P down. So um, I think that we're higher than normal chance of a pullback. And um, again, for the other notes, I think the dollar strength is going to be key uh, to, to observe on that. Then um, the next one that I'll cover is the bullish edge that I mentioned in play for the coming week. It really is Tuesday, um, it's really Wednesday to Friday. So this is one twelfth of the time uh, is this strong when it's in that condition, and all the other times are this. So this is just a huge. This is seven x performance, and if I go to the individual components, it looks like this. It's this period versus all the others. So you, now does it? It, does it go up 100% of the time? No, but there's been several strong rallies with this condition met result and then others negative. And that's what results in, you know, within that period is this, all the other times combined and average are this. So that's gonna help support the market Wednesday, Thursday, although, you know, uh, Friday market closed, heading to long weekend, I'm not expecting the same juice as usual. And then a few other the edges, the positive edges that were in play that are ending. Um, just to show you what it looks like, uh, this was what kicked in on Wednesday um, of last week for the Fed meeting that uh, you more than double the returns compared to all the other times. So that's going to be ending uh, early this week. And then the other edges that were in play, uh, here's another one. Uh, you know, in, out, so more, so that's over, and and that was part of the uh, change in character last week when that edge ran out, and then uh, lastly, this is a larger edge that's in play that often helps support the markets. Um, so that's still, I think that'll limit uh any pullback, and surely big institutions anywhere we get near a five percent drop are going to be stepping in because just been a monster uh, rally. But uh, so this is my attempt to quantify some of this, um, you know, admittedly very esoteric view in the markets, but here's where we do, we do technicals plus timing for the win. Uh, I hope that's been interesting and helpful to you. And I also want to remind you of the free resources on my Tableau public page, where if you're curious, you can check out, um, just how planet motion impacts the markets. There's a particularly compelling example. I mean, some of these you can say, oh, what's going on? But look at this. This is a Venus sign um, for Bitcoin. 
So here's how to use the planet index, uh, planet signs, cryptos. All these options are available at the top. Um, I know it gets a little overwhelming. It's a very complicated subject, but here we have Venus sign, and you've got a few different options to choose, but of course, most of them are correlated anyway. And then Venus in Aquarius produced this, and change of sign and Pisces produced a change in the market. Definitely not the first time this has happened. And then there's also a similar one for indexes. And um, so here's just one example. Mars sign also did very good for gold. gold. Here are all the assets in there that you could look at and see. Uh, so gold pop, and this, so Friday was the last trading day of Mars in this position. So I'm particularly interested if that continues, if gold is supported, which would point to uh, longer term events supporting gold or, or if it fades a little bit more because I want to be you know, watching my uh, gold position to see if it's time to take profits or not. So uh, that's going to be it for today. Thank you again for your interest. Thanks for your likes and subscribes. Good luck, everybody.